have a bit of a problem. Uh, I kind of ran out of spools. Uh, used pretty much every spool that I have that can fit five pounds of filament, so I just kind of stuck it here on the uh, uh, just a core of a spool. I don't actually have the rest of the spool. If you kind of look here, um, you can see there's a couple of uh, spools that are uh, kind of like homemade um, or electrical spools where I've cut them down to um, be able to put five pounds of filament. Uh, the problem is uh, I don't have a, a spool right now, and if you look, uh, I'm running out of uh, filament left. So what I'm going to do is actually make my own spool ends, cut that core down, and uh, I'll have extra spools. If you look, this here is a program called Mastercam. Uh, you can see that I actually made a uh, uh, just a couple of circles there on the screen. Uh, actually, what that stands for is uh, the spool that we're going to cut. Um, anyway, I kind of like to have composite school spools up so that if I have the composite spools, then uh, uh, what I can do is uh, quickly go through. We're going to select all the tool paths. I already put them in here. And uh, let's verify. Let's tell it to play. And this is what the machining center should do. So you see right there, it's actually, that's their version of a drill. Just a little cylinder that goes through and you can barely see that it's making some holes in there. And now this is the end mill. So you can really see that it's actually, you know, cutting through pretty good. Uh, this is Mastercam 8. It's a very old program. Um, in fact, I bought it in, I think, 2000. Um, but uh, there it is. Uh, that's all the cuts it's going to make with the machining center. Um, just kind of gives you a little visual update so you know what it's going to do. Put a bunch of holes in there so I can either stick filament through it or the three inner holes um, are so I can put a wire tie through there so I can quickly take apart the spool and put one together. Well, I loaded the program up into the Haas Machining Center um, anyway. And so now what I got to do is uh, I'm going to actually machine it. Uh, before I tell it to go, I'm going to kind of take a look at the uh, machine setup that I put on there. Basically, I put a school desk that I cut apart upside down. Uh, basically, it gives me a nice little laminate top on the bottom uh, to go up against the steel bed of the, the mill. And then uh, on the top, it gives me uh, a wood uh, base. And that way, I make sure that uh, I cut into it. Uh, you can see that it's not going to actually do anything to the cutter. Um, these, I'm using a carbide end mill. They're very, very hard, very, very sharp. Uh, I don't know whether I want to do the uh, uh, wood side um, out or the yellow side. So I think what we'll do is uh, we'll try this time. We're going to put the, uh, uh, the wood side down, so that will be the outside. Uh, last time, uh, I just ran one of these, and I did the uh, wood side up, and so that's going to be on the interior of the spool. And then the exterior of the spool is just going to be yellow, you know, kind of plain color, nothing real fancy. Uh, what I did, uh, this little groove on the inside of here, you see there's three holes that are actually in the middle of this. Um, and uh, this little groove here is so that the core fits in there. And basically, I'll have a spool as soon as I put three wire ties through it. Okay, so now we're ready to start machining. Um, I can, uh, this side, like a two-sided thing, I can either have yellow on the outside. It's kind of yellowish brown. Or I could have like a wood grain. I don't know if it can actually focus on that very good. I kind of like the wood grain out, so uh, outside has to go down. So we're going to put it down right there. And if you look, I already put like some little red marks to line it up a little bit. And I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to actually do anything right now. I'm just going to tell it to start. And uh, I'm going to do a tool change. In a second, you'll hear my air compressor kick on. And we're going to slow down the rapid a little bit. I'm going to kind of hold it down a little bit just to make sure it stays there. So it gets the first couple of screw holes in there at least. And it doesn't really put any force on it, so I can do it with my fingers. It's not a really big deal. If this slides a little bit one way or another, it doesn't matter. Uh, so long as the contours are okay, the circles going around, I care way more about those than I do about the holes being drilled. So uh, you can tell that uh, I do an awful lot of tool steel because uh, how fast, how slow it's actually uh, going down to the drill, and that I use a lot of step drill for it. So. Uh, uh, I'm sure that the router guys or cabinetry guys are laughing their head off right now. Okay, as soon as it's done with this hole, I'm going to actually sink the screw in it. 
Uh, don't do this. Uh, I'm an untrained professional. Uh, you could actually lose a finger. I might. sink a screw in it also. And that's a, just a cheap way of holding the, the thing down. If you were doing this, uh, go ahead and use an off stop um, and uh, stop the whole mill. Uh, then you can stop the spindle and everything and it'll go. So let's turn it up a little bit on our rapid. it's done with this hole, it's going to drill one other hole, I'm going to actually sink a screw in that. So, uh, two screws and that should be good enough to hold it down for the rest of the spool. going to go full depth and actually, you know, trim the whole thing one shot. So, the outside edge of our spool. That right straight through there. Okay, so let's get rid of this mess. You can see, still got it there. Just cranking out this. This is the oldest uh, Vision 3D printer that I'm actually running right now. That's the uh, very first one from it. All the others sort of came. So 
Anyway, let's take this thing off of here. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and put this spool up a bit and shove this straight down. Try to get all this filament on there. I can. There you go. 